okay so venkat is a very good friend of mine so venkat is also a uh, post graduate ms from the university of texas at dallas, uh, dallas. Uh, he loves marketing strategic decision making is interested in international policy and affairs and data analytics uh, he believes in uh, emphasize that communication is an uh, indispensable key for the success and he became he is also an author for a book and uh, he has this is uh, first uh, fantasy fiction novel the last stones of order a christian conversion and uh, conservation and an ice cream lover even i do love uh, ice creams thank <laughs> you so even <laughs> we would also like to have a small introduction from your end so that we can explain better yeah. and we can then we can take a decision yeah sure so thank you so much for having me so i am venkat and uh, i am from chennai too so i finished my schooling in st johns later on finished my undergrad in bcom from the ramakrishna mission vivekananda college and after that i did my mba with ranjit in uh, in iapm and uh, after that uh, i worked for hewlett packard for one year uh, in bangalore i worked for angel tv in chennai and then i worked for uh, yes bank for just about 6 months as a credit uh, underwriter for uh, i was working under the vice president uh, for yes bank and after that i um, i got another better opportunity to be the credit manager for the entire state of tamil nadu for hinduja leland finance i don't know if you guys have heard of it but it's a good company and i worked there for a couple of months before which i thought i really needed to you know expand my horizon and so i thought i i need to pursue my masters and so i've come here to the us and it's been a couple of years since i've come to the us so you guys have to really pardon me i my accent is messed up okay so it's like indian australian uh british and american okay so it's a blend of all of that so if you don't understand me if you're not able to follow through please let me know i will do my best to ensure that i put it in a very cohesive manner so i've been here in the us for a couple of years and i have uh, i'm gradu i've graduated from the university of texas at dallas with my masters in uh, data analytics and um, data science and so currently i i graduated last month and as you all know with the us economic recession that's been going on with covid-19 and stuff getting a job is pretty tough and so i'm look out i'm on the lookout for jobs for full time employment and i have already uh, you know attended a couple of interviews so hoping for the best and uh, Yeah, I'm really excited to uh, you know to talk with you guys to let you all know how uh, communication is very indispensable, very essential. You know, we all we are all talking about but essential business and services with this COVID-19 stuff going on, you know. And uh, as much as that is essential, communication is uh, you know equally essential for your career. So I am excited to talk about that. And um, so Ranjit, whenever you want me to start, I'd be ready to go ahead and just you know. Start. Yes, Vikrant. Yes, Vikrant. Uh, actually, I would like to thank you uh, for coming into the session, even in your busy schedule. And uh, thanks for joining us. And this is all yours. You can join. And once your PPT and your presentation is over, then may, maybe we'll have a quick question answer session, and then mm -hmm. we end up. So the session is all yours. You can start. Vikrant. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Perfect. So I I don't have like a PPT because I I thought I would rather go direct no and problem. you know have it active way. I don't want it to look formal. I don't want to look, you know, you know, make. I don't want to bore you guys. Okay, so um, I'll just go ahead and I'll just talk, and uh, we can have a conversation mm -hmm. instead of a presentation. Okay. Sure, sure. Hopefully, sure. okay. So, as you all know, I gave you a bit of uh, a background about myself, about my schooling, my college, and IAPM, and how I worked for a couple of companies. and so um so today's topic that uh, ranjit gave me is uh, why and how communication is indispensable for success i'm not saying that i'm successful but uh, you know with all these little uh, years of experience that i've had uh, and uh, also now that i'm a published author i can see i have seen how uh, communication is very very uh, essential and how how um, it helps you all through your career right so let's address this issue first let's address this question why it is important see um you always need to have a hip pocket skill that would set you apart from others okay uh everybody is different not everybody has the same potential and capabilities so what you can do your friend cannot do and what your friend can do you just can't so you just have to come to a point where you have to understand and realize and you have to be at peace with it saying that 
you know, I'm not going to do the same thing my friend is going to do. That's something that we all have problems with. I have faced that in my life all throughout. I have seen, uh, seen me becoming the victim of peer pressure where I said, oh, my friend is doing so phenomenally well in his career, but I can't do it. But the thing is, you know, you, you have certain capabilities that your friends don't. So, but there is one hip pocket skill that everybody must have, you know, all through their career, and that is communication. Because communication is one thing that would not die over, over a course of time, right? It would not die over a passage of time. So let's take technology, right? So we had radios and we had so many different forms of technology in the past. And now from radio, we have switched to iPods and, and you know, whatnot. You know, we, we have all these kinds of uh, uh, podcasts and stuff like that. But uh, if, you, if you see, communication is one thing. One of those things, though it has not evolved much, it has remained stable and it's very, uh, it seemed to have become very significant and very important all through the years. So it is something that would not wear out in a passage of time. So it would not die down and disappear. Uh, so communication is very essential. So that gives you why it is essential. I'm sure you must have all known now that you're all in B school. So uh, I'm sure you must have seen uh, how uh, significant it is and how vital and uh, uh, indispensable it is for you to understand the English language and also for you to communicate well in the English language, for you to put, put your thoughts through cohesively without any fillers in between. Uh, so um, as you all know, since English is not our mother tongue, since it's not our native language, it's not our first language, it could be a bit difficult for us, for us to you know, uh, translate our thoughts and articulate that in the English language. But communication, when I'm talking about communication, I specifically talk about communication in the English language, right? Because uh, English is the global language, it is the interconnecting language. And so um, for me to come to the United States, I had to take a TOEFL exam, which was test of English as a foreign language. So there was no exam that tested my skills in Tamil or Hindi or uh, tested my skills in Spanish or French. It was only English. So you have to understand that English will not die. And English is something that you need to master. The art of communicating in English is something that you need to master for you to grow in your, you know, in your career. So uh, that being said, why else communication is important? You see, I feel that communication acts as a gel, right? for you to seamlessly put forth your thoughts without any interruption, right? Uh, so you might have a good idea and you might have a very phenomenal solution to a problem, right? But if you're unable to put that across to your peers, if you're unable to put that across to your management, you know, it's pretty much like not having it at all. Right. So you need, uh, there are many people who are very good in computer science or many people who are very good in math very good in physics and chemistry and sciences. But I, you know, I have come across people who are very good in all of that, but have, don't have that command over the English language. And I have seen them, unfortunately, fail to put forth the solution. They have the solution, but they are unable to do that. You know, they are unable to put, put that forth to, to the management, to their peers. And so communication is something that acts as a gel for you to seamlessly put your thoughts through. So, um, as you're learning about all these, uh, uh, you know, uh, management techniques in your B school, I am sure you must learn about uh, quantitative techniques and whatnot, marketing techniques and uh, and uh, operation techniques and all that. But um, uh, for you to, you know, blend into the team and for you to work hand in hand with the team, you need to become very, very good in your communication skills. So I think that's something that you really need to uh, understand and. Uh, um, so um, let's let's take an example. So I have a couple of case studies that I want to present to you, and uh, it's uh, it's a study of uh, one of my favorite CEO, former CEO and chairwoman, and she's from India. I guess you might have just you know found out who that is by now. It is Indra Nui. Um, since I have done an extensive case study, a uh, market study on PepsiCo. PepsiCo is one of my favorite companies, and I've always wanted to work for PepsiCo, and I'm starting to apply for that, to be honest with you. But anyway, so uh, Indra Nui is from Chennai, and so she is one of my favorite, favorite uh, CEOs because I have seen uh, her uh, uh, ability, and I've seen her trajectory from where she was and to where she went to be when she retired from uh, PepsiCo last year. Now she's the director for Amazon, which is a pretty good deal. She makes 
so much millions of dollars. And so that's, that's a lot of money. But anyway, so, um, you know, let's, let's take this case example. Okay. So communication gets, helps you to get things done. All right. So, um, uh, this is the case study that I want to put forth for you. Uh, PepsiCo. PepsiCo is a multi, multi-billion dollar uh, American brand. So it's like the second largest beverage, food and beverage company in the world. First being Nestle, I believe. So PepsiCo has a lot of uh, you know, products, right? Their portfolio is well worse. It's, it's well diverse. So when Indra Nui, she was working as the vice president for strategy, uh, before she was promoted to become the chief executive officer. So when she became the chief executive officer, she found a pattern. She was able to, you know, decide and she was able to discern clearly that there was a shift. There was a shift in the trends of the customers. She saw how customers were now going on from fun for your products to good for your products and health for you know healthy for your products. So customers who were now who were actually loving sodas like Pepsi and, and Coca-Cola and chips that were high in concent- high, highly concentrated with, with, with salt and with, with chemicals, they were actually trying to move towards healthier alternatives. So she was able to proactively discern that well in advance in her, in her uh, you know, uh, time in the C-suite as the CEO of PepsiCo. And uh, she brought forth a strategy called Performance with, uh, performance with Purpose and she also introduced something called as healthy for your products, right? So she shifted the entire portfolio of Pepsi from fun for your products to healthy for your products. Now you have to understand, she was uh, PepsiCo is uh, um, you know headquarters is in New York City, in New York, in Buffalo, New York, uh, USA. And since PepsiCo is an American brand, and uh, I don't know about, I don't know if you know this, but Americans love their sodas, right? They can go without water, but they won't go without soda. They love soda. When I mean soda, it's Pepsi and Coca-Cola and and soft drinks like that. And so um, uh, when she came in here, when she tried to introduce that to her shareholders, there was apparent and there was very definitive opposition from them. Because you see, Americans bleed soda, right? They don't bleed blood. They bleed soda. So they drink a lot of sodas. Um, so the first thing when they when she put forth this idea to her shareholders, because you see, even if she's the CEO, she needs to get an approval from the shareholders, from the stakeholders, and from the board of directors to to implement a, a long term strategic decision for a company. And so when she did that, she was opposed. She was confronted with with so many American shareholders criticizing her, saying, "This just can't be. Americans will not." respond to this strategy because they cannot leave you know pepsi and they just they just can't leave uh, sodas and and go to a healthier alternative but what we have to take from here is this she was very good in her communication skills and she highlights that as well she emphasizes and she says how communication is very important and this has come you know she has proved that how it is very important so she, she was able to convince the American shareholders, the stakeholders in PepsiCo, to say that this particular strategy will work in the long term. Maybe it will not yield short-term benefits like you know, tremendous cash flow to the company, but it will yield in the long term. She was able to put that thought seamlessly to the shareholders and convince them. See, communication, that is one of the strengths of communication. You should be able to convince a person of your ideas, of your objective. So if you're not able to do that, maybe you need to master even more. You know, you, you need to foster your, your communication skills for you to do that. Because you will know that you're very good in communication when you're able to convince the other person of what you're trying to put forth. Or at least when you're able to have the decent dialogue instead of a monologue. Right. And so she was able to convince them after a long struggle, she was able to convince them. She just brought in this idea. She said, OK, now I have a board meeting. Right. And then there are uh, there are, there is the chief executive officer, the CFO, the chief marketing officer and, and, and all the C-suite people, you know, having a meeting in a room. And on to the right, there is a table and on the table, there are a lot of sodas and there, there is a set of water bottles. She found that those executives were going to the water bottles and they were not 
going to the uh, Pepsis and they were not going to the sodas that were there. So she said, if you can, you know, if you are going to go for healthier alternatives, how, how, how is it any different from a customer? So she said she was able to put forth that communication point saying, you are a customer yourself. You're no different, right? And so that convinced the American shareholders and they were able to give a, you know, get a green signal for this particular strategy. And believe it or not, this strategy worked tremendously. And PepsiCo, she was able to double the profits over a short period of time. And it crossed over $80 billion in revenues. That's a lot of money, okay? $80 billion in revenue. So she was able to therefore um, go through a uh, help PepsiCo transcend the 2008 subprime mortgage crisis that hit the US and across the world. If you remember, she became the CEO in 2006. And then in 2008 is when the global crisis came, you know, the financial crisis. And so she was able to transcend and, and, and take PepsiCo with her and uh, you know, through transition peacefully. Okay, so without any much snags in her business operations. So that being said, she was able to convince these people, right? If she was not good in her communication, she would have fallen, she would have faltered and she would have fallen victim, become a victim to these people's pressures and these people's apprehensions. But she was able to confront that and confront that with, with absolute fortitude, right? She was able to confront them with, with self-confidence and confident of what she was talking about. You can talk cock and bull story, okay? But you need to you need to have a uh, you need to have facts to substantiate your claim. So always remember that when you're communicating something to people, you should have facts to substantiate your claim. You cannot just build a cock and bull story because it just won't fly. All right. So uh, after that, she was able to do a, a tremendous deal. It's called the the Tropicana acquisition, the Quaker Oats uh, acquisition. So that that was the one of the best acquisitions in the history of acquisitions and mergers in the United States. And she was able to do that with uh, with uh, PepsiCo and uh, Quaker Oats and Tropicana and all these healthy for you products uh, doubled the uh, sales of the company and had you know it quadrupled a lot of other uh, frontier um, uh, profiles of that company at that point in time. So that is one of the things that, uh, so that is, there is one case study. And there is another case study that I wanna talk to you about. So it is, the, it is about um, the CEO of Hewlett Packard, the former CEO of Hewlett Packard. She ran for the presidency of the United States in 2016. Her name is Carly Fiorina. I don't know if you've heard of her, but she's uh, an excellent case study herself. Uh, so she went on to become uh, the chief executive officer of Hewlett Packard. It's called the Queen of Silicon Valley. Maybe not so anymore, but it was called the Queen of Silicon Valley back in those days. Uh, she, she was just a secretary to a nine-person real estate firm. So from that, she went on to become the CEO of Hewlett Packard. And she led one of the major, beautiful, and the most successful acquisition in the IT industry, which is the Compaq acquisition with HP. So again, communication played a very vital role during this entire process. Here's how. So when she was a secretary, she was just doing filing and she was just the secretary Kelly kind of a job where you just do filing, you just answer phones, uh, schedule meetings for people. And from there on, she, the, uh, there were a couple of gentlemen who came and saw potential in her and, and they said, she's really good in what she's doing and she's able to communicate very well. She has an excellent command over her language. Though she was an American, she was able to, you know, put forth her thoughts beautifully. And so they saw potential in her and they hired her to work for her, uh, work for them. Uh, and then she started to go into sales with AT&T. AT&T is like a telecom uh, industry, like a telecom car company here in the U.S., uh, a prominent one. And so and then from sales, she went on to marketing and from then marketing, she went on to the executive positions and from the executive positions to the, uh, to the chief executive officer. And she writes in her book, um, uh, Find Your Own Way. I just brought it from I bought it from Amazon. She says um, you need to have communication skills. You need to know your people. You need to know who to whom you're talking to. You need to know what they are and who they are. You need to know their strengths and their weakness. 
And you should have an excellent command over the English language. You should be able to put forth your thoughts cohesively. So guys, at the end of the day, all that matters is, are you able to communicate? Are you able to put forth your thoughts on the table and put it forth in the most convincing manner? That's, that's very important, right? And so that is one of the things I wanted to talk to you about. And then there, there are like, See, everything has its downsides. Everything has its pros and everything has its cons. So communication, it's, it's, it's like a double-edged sword, okay? So if you're communicating inaccurately, it could be dangerous, right? Uh, so it is so essential that you fine-tune your conversation, that you season your conversation with salt and with grace, meaning which you are able to... to dial it down a bit and then structure your uh, communication before you rant and rave to people, right? So take it down a bit, take it down a notch. And then before you communicate a word, before you communicate a sentence, double check it, just think about it and then, and then slow it down and then start talking. Okay. So there, I have seen people who could just, you know, start talking and they'd be rambling on for, for hours together. Hopefully I'm not going to do that to you today. I'm just going to be very concise. But I would just want to say this. When you're delivering anything, please ensure that you deliver it accurately. And if there is any inaccuracy in your conversation, it could lead to misunderstanding. And misunderstanding, just a small misunderstanding. Now, speaking from a business perspective, just a small misunderstanding could, could, could potentially cost your business millions of dollars, right? And so you have to be very, very... Uh, careful while you're um, communicating either uh, you know, orally or, or in a written format. So I just wanted to talk to you about that. And then there are some points that I wanted to also highlight. So you know, some people have already asked me, like, how, did you, how, how can one improve communication skills, right? So I'm going to come down to the basics. It's like reading, writing, speaking, and listening, OK? So yeah, reading. I'm just going to go over here, right? Reading is very, very essential. Now, with all this ebooks and all of that, you know, all of this electronic gadgets that's come along, I am always a fan of this good old, you know, strong hardcover. Okay, I, I, I really detest ebooks. I, I just don't like them. But anyway, either format, reading is essential. Um, some people say, oh well, we are actually just, you know, listening to audiobooks and stuff like that. Well, as long as that, that comes into the listening part, but here's why reading is very important. So when you're reading a very good article or a very good book, your mind would tune itself and your mind would see the structure formations, the, the sentence structures and the structure formation of sentences. And it'll be able to see the, the, uh, uh, how exactly the, the sentences are formed and how exactly the sentences are communicated. So, See, English language is one of the most interesting languages, right? Um, uh, it has its own pros and cons, but uh, if you have to master your English language, you have to start reading first. You need to read a lot of books, okay? You need to read a lot of articles. You need to read a lot of things that is in the English language. But mind you, you have to ensure that when you're reading, you read from a very good source. You just can't read a Tom, Dick, and Harry's book, okay? That just won't fly. You have to read a book that is very, very good in, 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 in the way they put, the, uh, put forth their points. It has to be formal. It has to be good. It has to have substance in it. So only that would, would really help you to foster your reading skills, and therefore that would help you with your, with your you know, uh, English communication skills. And of course, listening, um, uh, uh, something that I found very interesting, very intriguing is this. Um, when I came to the United States, I found that the culture is interlinked with the language. Um, so Tamil culture is interlinked with the Tamil language as much as English culture is interlinked with the English language. So when you're listening to a lot of people talk in English, especially to non, you know, to native English speakers, like people from the United Kingdom or Australia or the United States, you'll be able to understand and you'll be able to blend in with your culture and see how that, that particular, uh, how the English language, how their dialect of English language stems from their culture. And when you're understanding their culture, you'll be able to understand, you'll be able to, to really retain uh, you know, the English language really well. So, and then I just have to talk about writing uh, since I'm an author myself. Uh, you can, you know, Google my book. It's called The Lost Stones of Edor. 
And um, it's a fantasy fiction that I wrote after being inspired reading uh, the Chronicles of Narnia and the Lord of the Rings. So um, writing, it would help you, you know, understand the language. It would also help you identify to a degree of, you know, how, how much you've understood that particular language. It will help you identify the degree. So you can talk the good talk. But when it comes to writing, if you're unable to put a good formal letter, if you're unable to put forth a, uh, you know, a precise uh, email in a very compre with very comprehensive precision, you know, it would be disastrous. You know? So when you're going to a job, when you're going to an, uh, a managerial position, if you're unable to put forth uh, an email, just an email to your colleague or to your superior, with such comprehensive precision, you know, it would be a disaster because people can see through that and they would see, oh, well, he's not that good in writing. So maybe he's not that good in what he says he is. So uh, ensure that you start writing a lot. Start writing formally. OK, uh, with, that will help you with your grammar and punctuations. So you will know where to pause, where to start and where to stop. All right. And uh, speaking, the final thing. So speaking is very, very essential. You may have a wonderful you know habit of reading you may be excellent in writing you can listen to a lot of podcasts you can listen to a lot of youtube and a lot of netflix it won't help you until you start speaking speaking is where the bridge that connects it's the bridge that connects you from the resource to actually practicing it right so you have all the resource packed with with writing with or with listening and with reading but you need to practice it so speaking becomes a bridge and it connects that and you put that into practice so it helps you in the most pragmatic sense to be honest um so you see um this is one of the very essential components of success um if you're unable to communicate if you're unable to speak your point if you're unable to speak it with such conviction that the other person you know is not convicted is not convinced of your point then you are you you just have not mastered that art just yet so success you know that there is a there is a i would say a portion of success that would uh, stem from this where you're able to convince other people of your ideas how valid your ideas are how beautiful your ideas are and why it is better than any of the any of the other ideas on the table so you'll have to start speaking and english is something that you know uh, english language is something that that won't come until you start practicing it. I'm, I'm sure people must have told you about that, but uh, you really need to um, start speaking. If you have not done that, I would encourage you to do that right from today. And also, um, I would. Uh, there is so much I could talk about, but uh, owing to the you know lack of time, I'd, I'd keep it precise. Uh, but um, there are different forms of communication, like personalities like people who are aggressive and people who are very professional people who are very diplomatic and uh, then people who are very pleasant so uh, but no matter what kind of a strategy or no matter what kind of a person you are no matter what kind of a personality matches your personality so uh, I would say that always ensure that your your communication is, is seasoned with salt and grace so that it would be it would be uh, pleasant for the hearer right um, so I just wanted to, I will just give you uh, like my life experience. You know, what, some could question, oh, you could talk the talk, but how did communication help you? So I will just give you one uh, particular example. Um, so I, after I, uh, you know, I resigned from a job at Angel TV, I was looking out for a job uh, outside in, in, in Chennai, but later on I got a job, uh, you know, an interview for Hewlett Packard. And so I went to the job interview. And uh, believe it or not, I was quite, quite confident. I thought, oh, well, I'm the one person. Maybe there would be like 10 people who would come to the job, okay? There would be like 10 people who would come to the job. And I was quite confident. I was happy and I was like, okay, I'm going to do this. So when I land at the destination, like when I reach the destination, right, I see there are 750 people who have come for the same position with HP. And I was like, what? That just is unacceptable, right? And so... I, I thought, oh my God, this is not going to work out. I started to freak out. But um, the way that they interviewed was, uh, was interesting. So they uh, separated the 750 people into packs of 60 and uh, they were interviewing these packs at once. So there were like seven rounds of interviews. So the first round of interview was self-introduction. So uh, the, the HR manager, who had come in there, she said, uh, 
I'll give you one minute to introduce about yourself and uh, we will uh, you know, then decide if you'll go on and qualify for the next round. So when my time came, I, I spoke about myself for just one minute. And she said, the HR manager said, you have such clarity of thought, you have such clarity of, uh, you know, your, uh, your communication uh, is very good and your command over the English language is very good. So I am therefore qualifying you for the final round. And so I surpassed all the six rounds and I went to the final round, right? And so that, so you see how communication helped me. It put me, it gave me that competitive advantage over 750 people. And it, did, it just put me to the final round of, of, of interview, surpassing all six others. And, uh, and after I got into HP, I'm not that tech savvy, but after I got into HP, I handled Australian and New Zealand customers, just about 60 to 70 people per day. And that's a lot of people. But when I did that, I spoke with, I, I encountered different kinds of customers, right? I encountered people who are happy or not so happy, customers who are very irate. And so I'll just give you one case study uh, or one situation like where I, um, it, it's something that I would never forget in my life. So um, there was this one customer who called in from Australia with a, with a, with a technical issue with his HP product. And while I was talking to him, you know, he got so irate that he said, he would personally sue me for millions of dollars and he would sue Hewlett Packard for millions of dollars. And believe you me, when I say this, he was a top notch attorney in Australia and he could have pretty much done that, right? I really didn't know how to do it because I was not that tech savvy, right? But here's where my communication really helped me. I was able to first pacify the customer, assure him of our service and assure him of our continued support. Secondly, I was able to go and bring in the managers, the supervisors, and I was just able to rope them in. I was able to immediately tell them what was the problem, what is needed at this point in time, and what could be done. And they were able to give me their ideas. I downloaded that ideas to me, and then I articulated that to the customer. And I was just like a, you know, uh, like a conduct, right? To, to who was able to just uh, pass on the information. And at the end of the call, the customer was so happy with the service. He said, I was able to solve the problem in the most tremendous way possible that he'd never seen people do it before. And he wrote a long recommending, commending letter about me to HP's management. After that, I got lots and lots of uh, appreci uh, appreciation letters from uh, customers of HP who said that my communication was very good and I was able to solve the problem just because of my communication. And I got a lot of awards at HP because of that. So you see, communication is very important. This are, these are like a couple of examples I could give you from my from my life, but uh, I'm just going to close with this. Uh, since Ranjit said it's the floor is all mine, I'm I'm just going to go briefly tell you how I was you know blessed uh, with uh, with communication, uh, especially in the English language. When I was uh, studying in St. John's in my sixth grade, I failed my English exam. I failed in my English subject. I really didn't know how to speak in English. I really didn't know how to write a sentence, a proper sentence in the English language. But later on, of course, what helped me, um, this is what helped me personally, and therefore I can attest that only to me personally. And uh, is that uh, when I came to uh, my 11th or my 12th grade, that's when I accepted Christ as my uh, personal Lord and Savior. And uh, uh, to be very honest with you, it was Christ who taught me from it was the Lord Jesus Christ who taught me from A to Z as far as my English is concerned, because he he told me that I will appoint you for honor and fame in all those places where put to shame. So I have had people, my my friends, who you know who would just criticize and bully me, saying your English is not that good. You just don't know how to speak in English, and they were just criticizing me when I was a kid. But later on, when I accepted Christ, He blessed me with such you know command over my English language that I started to. Anytime, anywhere I go, almost predominantly, just 90%, virtually 90% of people would just come and tell me that your English is really good. So for me, it was Jesus who helped me. And uh, there are different sources. There are different uh, alternatives uh, where you know, people can take, uh, take advantage from. Um, uh, and so I started to watch a lot of uh, English show, uh, shows, uh, American television. But, uh, uh, you know, uh, I am sure you would, you would know by now there is a lot of profanity and violence in, in American sitcoms these days. So I wouldn't recommend that. But if there is a, a particular TV show that I would recommend for you to watch, it would be uh, Downton Abbey. I don't know if you've heard of it, but Downton Abbey is one of the, uh, one of the best 
best uh, TV shows there is. You could really, really learn a lot from that. So it, it doesn't have much of profanity and it's, 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 it's highly decent. And so, um, so yeah, so I just wanted to um, ascribe that all glory to, to Jesus for giving me this, uh, this command over the English language. And uh, to conclude, I just wanted to say one more thing. Um, uh, I have known Ranjit for two years, right? I've known him for two years, like while, while studying at IAPM. And he's this kind of a person whom I've seen who is very, very proactive. And I was like, I really didn't know how to get things done, but he was so proactive even at, at that time in 20, from 2012 to 2014, that's when I, I knew him personally, like we, we met on a daily basis. I worked with projects, uh, in projects with him. And he's, uh, he's tremendous in communication. He's tremendous in convincing people. So I think, uh, yeah, that's pretty much I have for you today. And if there are any questions, I'm so sorry. It took a lot of time. If there are any questions, please feel free, uh, feel free to ask. Definitely me. not, Lincoln. Thank you so much for the beautiful session uh, from your Pepsi till your sixth standard story. We really got inspired. <laughs> and uh, even in our college days, uh, I used to have subtitle for whatever whenever you talk. I used to have subtitles. <laughs> <laughs> even many of our uh, students would have uh, asked for the same subtitle today when you have spoken. <laughs> they would have they would definitely... Uh, your communication skill was really awesome and uh, the way you told that about your sixth standard English fail, it was really inspiring for me. I thought you would have scored all the uh, exams from your first standard to today. You would have scored oh, sent them in your English and all the papers, but still it was really a very, very inspiring story on your story and other case studies, whatever you have discussed. And uh, how, how was my uh, communication? Have I, I mean, got yeah. improved. <laughs> yeah, of course, you've improved tremendously. I mean, you've you've done so well for yourself from the day I've known you. So yeah. you're working for a B school. So that's that's a lot to say, and that would really that that means a lot. So yeah, you've done pretty well for yourself. Thank you, thank you, Vinkan. So we have got some many questions here. Uh, so guys, you can oh. post your questions in the chat box. I'll ask one by one oh. to Vinkan. So Vinkan will be answering it. So the first question is from Mohammad Adil. Can our listening skills can boost our communication skills or not? Yeah, it really will because communication is one part of communication is listening. So, uh, so while you're listening, you can increase your vocabulary. So when you're listening to a lot of people, you know, dictionary has a lot of words, but a lot of people have a lot of words too. So when you're diff uh, listening to a lot of people, they will have words uh, that, that you must have not heard in your past. So um, listening will tremendously improve your communication abilities and your communication skills, especially when you're listening to sound uh, English programs, uh, not some 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 crap on on TV or not some anything that that would that that doesn't have any formal or definitive uh, structure to the English language. Uh, but uh, like I said, listening to to programs like uh, TV shows like Downton Abbey that would really help you. So listening is very important. Yeah, you should start listening if you haven't been doing so. Thank you, Venkat. So next question is, Ms. Muthalakshmi has asked you, how to improve my vocabulary, sir? Yeah, so the first thing I think you have to do is um, start reading. So the four principles, right? This is like very basic, but that is very essential. There is nothing beyond this as far as, you know, your communication is concerned. So for, for you to improve your vocabulary, all you have to do is start reading. Start reading good books, okay? Start reading good novels. I would suggest start with Chronicles of Narnia because it doesn't have that very uh, high standard of English. It has uh, the, the subtle children kind of an English, you know, used for children. So it's a children's book. So I would suggest that you start with that and then, uh, and then uh, you know, go on to reading uh, The Lord of the Rings and uh, read good fiction novels where uh, written by English authors, mind you, you have to, uh, um, I would highly recommend British authors, right? And so those authors, because that's their native language, so they would have a lot of words that uh, we have never seen or heard before. And so we could use that in our day-to-day, -day, um, you know, um, Conversations, yeah. Okay, thanks, Venkat. And uh, I've got one more question, Mr. from Kishore. Mm -hmm. What was the biggest challenge you had in your career with regards to communication? Wow, that's a good question. Um, I don't think I've had much of a challenge. Uh, well, during my time at HP is when it was quite challenging, but not because I was bad at communication, but because I was bad in the technical part of it because you know I'm from marketing side and I don't know much about computer science. 
but uh, communication is what helped me. I didn't have much of a problem in my career with communication. So far, so good by God's grace. So, you know, <laughs> so yeah, hopefully that answers your question. Yeah. Uh, so next question is uh, from Abhini Asis. Sir, can you tell me some place where you would have got struggled or thought my communication is not enough, I should update myself to next level, then how did you overcome it? Oh, wow. What a good question. So, yeah, when I was in my 10th grade, right, so I had a lot of friends and uh, I don't know why, but all of my friends have been predominantly North Indians, people like the Hindi Valas. It's a lot of Hindi Valas. But anyway, I, I, I love them and it's, it's really good. But the thing is, so I can't talk to them in Tamil and they can't talk to me in, in uh, I can't talk to them in Hindi and they can't talk to me in Tamil. And so there was this policy in my, in my school that said English only. So if we were to speak in any other language besides English, we were fined 1,000 rupees on the spot. This was in the year 2008 or nine. And so when I was in my 10th grade, uh, I I struggled with my communication because that's when I was transcending from, from poor to an average student at communication. But what really helped me was I was, I wouldn't recommend, but this is what happened. I, I was a devout, like I was an Harry Potter addict. Okay. I read the books like thousands of times and I watched the movies like thousands of times. So I was in, and that really helped me with my English language because it was written by, uh, by a British author, JK Rowling. So, um, uh, when I when I did that, what happened was uh, this is very important. That's a good question. So when I I read those I read those books and the English was very good. So I tried to implement that in my day to day uh, conversations. At first, I faced backlash. I faced people criticizing me and 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 you know just just pulling my leg and they were just. Uh, humiliating me and saying, oh, no, your English is not that good. But I was trying and I tried and I tried and I tried. I kept implementing, not giving a damn. I'm sorry to use the word, but not giving a damn of what people would say. OK, I just didn't care. I wanted to improve my English and I was going to do it. So I implemented all those con all those words that I learned in Harry Potter. I, I just put that into my day to day conversation and gradually my English uh, you know, improved. So Thank hopefully you. that answers. It was lovely. It was lovely. Next question from Mr. Abdul Hanan. Uh, do you recommend reading newspaper if I'm a beginner? Yeah, reading newspaper is very, very good. So you could stay up to date. I love news. I love international affairs. I love international politics. And so reading newspaper is really, really good. You could, you know, you could improve your English language. You could also improve your general knowledge. It's very vital, you know. When you go to uh, go to any job today, they're not going to ask you general knowledge questions like how we how it was taught to us in school, like what is the capital of this or what is the capital of that. That's not going to be the question. All they're going to ask you is, what do you think of this situation? For example, how do you think President Trump is handling COVID nineteen? How do you think Prime Minister Modi is handling COVID nineteen? What do you think of uh, President Trump's recent travel ban? So you should know what is this travel ban. He just made a travel ban yesterday, suspending all H-1B visas and all non-immigrant visas entering into the United States. So you should be up to the, you know, it should be up to the mark. You should have everything uh, up to date uh, when it comes to news. And uh, there are certain newspapers that I would highly recommend. The first newspaper I would recommend is the Hindu because the Hindu uh, English is the best. And, uh, but I wouldn't recommend the Times of India. I am sorry, but I just wouldn't recommend the Times of India or Deccan Chronicle. But if you're here anywhere in the outside, uh, if you're in the US, I would recommend Washington Post or the New York Times. Thank you, thank you. Although I'm a Trump fan, I, I shouldn't recommend that. That's fake news, but as far as English is concerned, that's that's good, yeah. So from then are you the Trump fan? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm a Trumper. I love Trump. Okay, okay. So next question is from Mr. Andrew Anderson. How to overcome stage fear? Can you see a lot oh, of wow. people staring at you? Mm -hmm. Wow. Ranjit, your students have wonderful questions. I'm really surprised. That's okay, really nice. Okay, yeah. So stage fear. Um, for me, like when I, um, my first uh, uh, speech that I gave was in my school, right? And so it was the first speech I was to give was to address 3,000 people at once. It's a lot of people. And so when I came there, and the, the, you wouldn't believe the topic for that was the same topic as we are having today, how communication is important, right? And so that was a topic that I spoke on, what, 10, 12 years ago? And that was my first time on stage. And so the minute I got on stage, I was 
see, um, some people, to, a person told me that stage fear is equal to the fear of death. I think it was my mom. Yeah, she, she was the one who told me. She said stage fear is equal to the fear of death. So when a person is going up to the stage, when he sees that, you know, thousands of eyes looking at you and you're the center of attention, that's when you start to get the nerves. That's when, a co you know, you, you just become nervous, right? And so how to overcome that? It is only by practice, right? Even today, when I'm about to address like, a, like hundreds or thousands of people, I get jitters just for a minute or two, but you need to overcome that. It can be done only through practice. Fear, you know, you have to fear only fear itself. You don't have to fear anything else. Number second thing you can do is you should have sound proofs. You know, you should have points. You should have, like I said, convincing points as to what, what are you talking about? You should be sure of that yourself. And thirdly, you should have a tremendous vocabulary. You know, somebody told me the other day that when you're giving a speech, ensure that, you know, you just are looking at empty chairs instead of people sitting on it. Just imagine empty chairs and then how you would talk to people, how you would talk to an empty room yourself. So these are the things that would really help you. But one, uh, one thing that would help you a lot more than anything else is practice. So seek opportunities that would give you, uh, uh, you know, a stage presence. Seek opportunities where you could go and talk on stage and address people. When you do that and when you do a, pretty good job, you become very good at it. And that would, you know, uh, eventually increase your confidence. Thank you, Venkat. So the next question is from Mr. Abhishek. Uh, what's your biggest achievement in your life, sir? Wow, okay. So my biggest achievement in my life, well, I haven't achieved much, but uh, I would say, um, so I was uh, at home in Chennai uh, for a month. I resigned from Hinduja, right? Uh, Hinduja Leila in Finance. I resigned and I was preparing for my uh, GRE and my TOEFL and for my MS. And so I did well in GRE, you did well in TOEFL. But I had one month time and uh, for my US visa interview. And so that one month time I said, well, I've always wanted to write a book, so let me write a book. So I think to date I would say writing a book and getting it published is one of my accomplishments. Uh, but there's a lot to go. There's always room for improvement. Okay, thank you, thank you. So the next question is, uh, recommend some good English books, sir, from Gausik Rudran. From who? From Mr. Gausik Kumar Rudran. Uh, he's okay. asking, uh, recommend some good English books, sir. Oh, good. Okay. I would say start with the Chronicles of Narnia. I would not recommend Harry Potter. I'm sorry to say, but that's that's not good. <laughs> okay. Uh, the reason is because I, I later found out how subtly, uh, you know, devious it is okay so I, I just wouldn't recommend harry potter but i would say chronicles of narnia it's healthy it's clean there's no profanity and then the lord of the rings including the hobbit and uh, i would and then my oh, my own book the lost stones of edor right but anyway <laughs> and then uh, i would i would recommend james uh, patterson's uh, uh, you know uh, uh james patterson's and and bill clinton's uh, book uh, which they which they came up together called the white house so that is a good book and i would also recommend uh there are a lot of books if um let me think of good english authors i um, guess uh, sir conan uh, Bryan, uh, sherlock holmes also the series sherlock holmes is very good yes yeah there is there is no and that's a good book and also um there, there's a lot of talk about about uh, game of thrones I wouldn't recommend that. I'm sorry, but see, uh, anything that I would recommend is something that is healthier for your uh, for your conscience. You know, if I'm what I mean, because uh, if there are books that consist profanity, that consist violence or graphic uh, details, it wouldn't it wouldn't help you at all. So um, start with all of these books, and then and then you could go on uh, from there. Uh, since I I don't I didn't I don't read much of fiction these days, though I'm reading a James Patterson's book. Um, uh, uh, I am reading a lot of spiritual books, uh, but those are in the English language too. But as of now, I would suggest that you start reading with uh, with these couple of books, and then you know you'll be able to go on from there. Um, after after you start reading, see one thing about reading is this: after you start reading a couple of novels, that's when you'll be able to identify what genre really attracts you. So there are people who really love the mystery, the mystical novels, right? And then there are people who really love fantasy fictions. I love fantasy. And there are people who just love philosophy. 
And so they would go that route. So you need to pick up your own taste, pick up your own, uh, you know, platter that would help you uh, go beyond. So I don't know any other books that's beside fantasy fiction. So you might like books that are that are based on science fiction. And so you could go from there on. So just, you know, Amazon, just go to Amazon. There are so many books. Identify your genre, start reading, ensure that it has very good English language. It's written by an English author and then start implementing all those you have learned uh, in your day-to-day -day conversations. So yes, next question is from Mr. Rahul. An interesting question too. Uh, sir, I'm good in listening and understanding the English, sir. But when I try to speak, I'm struggling, sir. I couldn't be able to overcome it. So how do I talk? How do I express? Okay, so wow, that's a good question. Um, you brought a beautiful word, express. So you have to be expressive. In the English language, English language is one language where expressions and emotions blend together with the words, okay? So you could stand there as a robot and then you could just say a sentence, but you could use gestures, you could use fillers, and you, know, you just could blend in your emotions with the conversation. Um, I struggled with that too uh, um, when, when it came to listening. I was very good at listening. I, I listened to a lot of podcasts. I listened to a lot of shows when I was in my school. But the thing is, I was not able to talk that effectively. But what made me overcome that was continuing to speak and not give up, right? You need to continue to speak. Don't fear, you know, some people just fear that they would make a mistake when they're talking. If you would just cross that point, kick off that point and then go beyond that, that's where your success is. There are many people who would just refrain from talking more so because they're they are scared that what if I'm wrong? What if I'm humiliated at? What if I'm ridiculed, right? But you just can't, nobody is perfect. You just need to understand that. And English is not our native language. We are not native English speakers. So it's absolutely okay. You don't have to be, you know, you don't have to be JK Rowling. You don't have to be the queen of England for you to speak in a very seamless English, uh, uh, you know, accent or with, with such tremendous knowledge in the language. All you have to do is you need to go beyond what you have already been, uh, you have been doing in the past. So there are, there are certain things called comfort zones for people. There are people who, who, who embrace them, themselves, who envelop themselves within a, a certain comfort zone. And they just uh, don't want to go beyond that. And there is another reason. They're just scared to go beyond that. So you have to break out of that. And I would say this is a very, very a good time for you to do that because you're in a B school. This is where you can hone your communication skills because when you're in the job market, that's where you need to deliver. This is where you can train. And Ranjit is doing a good job, I can say. But you need to train your communication skills right now. So I would recommend to Ranjit that you know you bring on many, many projects or 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 homeworks or 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 you know programs that would help people talk on stage, that would you know get rid of their stage far of stage fright and yes. and ensure that you know you put people to start talking. Uh, remember Ranjit, when we were in IAPM, we did a lot of presentations, right? Yes, and so that yes. kind of really helped us to to break off out of that stage fright. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Venkat. Definitely I'll take this suggestion. And a few more questions only left. So who's your inspiration and who's your role model, sir? Oh wow. Oh all your questions are really good, folks, I gotta say. It's really nice. But anyway, so for me, um, there are a lot of people who have been my role models. Uh, one is my school principal, uh, Mrs. Nalini Wilson. Uh, she, I really learned a lot from her. So she has tremendous fortitude. She's like this lioness. She doesn't care, you know, about, pe I mean, like what people think. She just is the boldest person I've met. And she had a tremendous command over the English language. And so she was inspiring. I learned a lot from her. And she was the one who put me on stage and uh, she would, so talk so fluently when you know while on stage and I'd, I'd be so impressed by that i'd be so inspired i'd say oh i want to talk like that and so when i was when i was so in fond of that and i was always in, you know inspired by her i would picture myself standing on a stage and talking to people and so that was one of the techniques just so you know but uh nalini wilson is my role model I would say Indra Nui is my role model. Always she will be President Donald Trump is, although his communication is more, more informal and he gets, he's, he, he has a lot of fun while doing it, but then uh, I have a lot of uh, uh, role models. And then there is the former CEO of Hewlett Packard, Carly Fiorina, Meg Whitman, and uh, yeah, pretty much that. And 
I don't think there is anyone else besides that, except for God, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And Shweta Balavaradan has asked you a question: How to manage similar words while speaking in a decorum? Uh, could you repeat that question? How to manage similar words while speaking in a decorum? Okay, so similar words. I guess she's meaning synonyms. So yes. um, the thing is, yeah. Um, so uh, look at let, let's look at let's look at the sentence. Um, when you are talking, always ensure that you pep that talk with some adjectives. As you know, adjectives beautifies a sentence, right? So you could say, well, he's he's a handsome. Uh, she's she's a good-looking woman, or you could say she's a beautiful woman. So um, adjectives use adjectives while talking. As far as synonyms is concerned, you could ensure that you are comfortable using you're using only those terms that you're comfortable with. I am comfortable in if let's say I'm comfortable in using the word beautiful and then I go with it. And then there's another person who would say I'm comfortable in using the word stunning and then they would go with it. So whatever gets you, whatever makes you comfortable, just go with it. There is no prescribed standard as just this is how you should speak because that just don't work. Communication is an art. So it, it can be personalized and customized to everybody's, you know, their own uh, whims and fancies. So what I what flies with me won't so much fly with you. So use words that are that you're comfortable with at first. And uh, if, if there if there are synonyms, I'm sure you would get a hang of it as you continue to progress, you know, talking in English. Thank you. And Abhinia C is once again she has asked a question. Mm -hmm. Sir, I have one more question. That's accent plays an important role in communication. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Is, is, is there so a question? question? Yeah, that's what. Does accent plays an important role oh, in communication? Ask, yeah, it, it does, but not so much. So um, here in the in the US, I have found that your accent doesn't play much of a role as long as you have the clarity of speech. That doesn't, uh, you know, uh, that doesn't uh, make much of a difference. But uh, there are two predominant accents in the world: the British accent and the American accent. Uh, so, uh, you know, as you can see, my accent is pretty much messed up. So when I was in HP, I, I catered to Australian customers, and then from India, I have the Indian accent, and then the British accent because I love it, and then the American accent because I was, I was here in the US for two years. So it's pretty messed up, but hopefully you were able to understand what I was saying the, all, all of this time. But accent is not that important, but as long as you have the clarity of thought and speech, that's more than enough. Okay. Uh, so next question is from Mr. Rakesh. Sir, are you mm -hmm. an average student in your college days? Yeah, I was less than average. So I was not doing that well. Okay, I'm not I'm not an A student. I'm not a person who got uh, uh, straight hundreds or straight A's in my school. I was less than an average student, but I worked hard. And uh, I was able to, uh, one thing I found out was I was not ashamed to go and ask people for help. Okay, so you should not be ashamed to go and ask people for help. If you want your job to get it done, you need to go and ask people for help. Don't hesitate to do that. So what, uh, when I graduated from my master's in UTD, so UTD is like the 16th ranking school all over the world with Stanford being the number one as far as data science is concerned. Um, so it was pretty tough uh, for, for me for two years when I was doing that, but um, I graduated with a 90% in my master's. And how was that possible? Of course, by God, number one. Secondly, I was able to go and ask people for help because I don't have any computer science background. I went and spoke with people, communicated with them, and I was able to get help. So I was not an uh, I was less than an average student. So if I can do it, pretty much can do it. Yeah. Uh, but Venkat, you are the topper in our college days. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe in our school days. Okay. Uh, Keetan has asked you another question. Uh, sir, can you suggest some ways to improve communication for a quicker way? When we are preparing for an interview or something, shortcuts to for a effective oh, communication. Wow! Wow! <laughs> what a question! But for me, I don't know. I don't think I would recommend a shortcut for communication. 
Uh, as far as interview is concerned, what you can do is you could just Google your area, your field of interest. For example, if you're going for a marketing interview as a marketing manager, then you could just Google the basic or the common questions asked for a marketing manager, uh, a marketing manager's interview. So you could ask that, but there is no shortcut for your communication. You have to, you know, uh, ensure that you do that on a long-term basis. So it doesn't come overnight. It comes it takes a lot uh, you know it takes a lot of time and it, it happens over a period of time so um there is a, wouldn't recommend a shortcut because if there's a shortcut then that would be short lived so for you to have a long term effect for you to have a long term transformation you need to take the time and the patience to do it i guess uh, when you're getting more questions but still uh, students are getting <laughs> into so one uh -huh. mr solomon has asked a question sir when communicating we might know the words but it won't hit the mind at a point did you have this problem how to overcome it um so uh, if i'm not if i'm not mistaken i guess he's asking me if we don't understand the words people are talking is that what he's asking no no what he's asking is uh, see for example if i'm asking you a question you know the answer but you don't know how oh, to okay. express it right 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 the way how the yeah. right the choice of words were not been met Okay. Okay. So, so sometimes what happens is when you're talking, so you'll have a word that would come right up here, and then you won't be able to articulate it well. So that's when you hit a snag. But how to overcome that is to just blurt it out. Okay, just blurt it out. Just go ahead and speak it. For the first time, it might be wrong. It's okay. For the second time too, it could be wrong. It's okay. Even if it's wrong for the tenth time, it's fine. But start blurting out the words. Start speaking. Just don't refrain from speaking. So when you do that, you're just emboldening your your hesitancy to speak, and you're just emboldening your weakness. All you have to do is just break forth, and you have to start talking and start talking and start talking. If you're wrong for the first couple of times, it's fine. Keep on going. If you're not able to find the right word. just use the word that you know that sounds similar to that word or that would convey a similar meaning and that's why i i hi, highly recommend that you start increasing your vocabulary because you know uh, uh, you cannot just translate a, a tamil sentence literally to english language because that just doesn't make sense uh, because if you're going to translate one particular sentence from tamil to english you know it 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 wouldn't work because english has a different grammatical structure and all all of those things you know that right and phonetics plays an important part in that so uh i would say start reading a lot of books and there are there are many softwares online that says that would give you an update like a word for a day so you can learn a word for today and then start using that word that day for example uh let's say um i i learned the word flabbergasted today and then i would say oh i am flabbergasted by such reception uh of this particular interview or this particular webinar and then so you could start using that right so start learning don't keep it with yourself start using them hopefully that answers your question i'm pretty much giving a long answers lengthy answers for all of the questions so it's please bear with me i'm sorry you don't get tired we are actually we are so much into now uh, oh, so one more question sir uh, we have saying called don't be afraid to make mistakes hmm? i hope you would have also made some mistakes how would you handle that sort of humiliation you face sir uh so i would what i would do is i would just not bother about it i would just brush it off my shoulders i would say even i'm human i'm not god so i'm going to be imperfect so i would just brush it off my shoulders i would pick up myself and pick up my mantle and then keep walking keep talking and then keep doing it so i have made a lot of mistakes i have made a lot of mistakes i continue to do it today but that doesn't stop me it shouldn't stop you either you need to go on right because not everybody is 100% perfect you just can't expect that of everybody you know at any point in time so it's fine okay so how can we overcome the problem of fluency while speaking with someone mm -hmm. so again uh for fluency i would say uh again it's it's repetition you need to you know as long as you're for example if you're using one word today it doesn't mean you have to use that word only for today you can start using that for the rest of your life and so start using the words 
that you have learned in your in your past and start using that on a day to day conversation. When you do that over a period of time, eventually you will increase in your fluency. Fluency is something that does not happen overnight. Again, I, I that's why I say there's no shortcut to to increasing your communication skills. So it's something that would happen over a period of time. So you need to learn a lot of words, a lot of words that would sound posh, that would sound really polished. Those words would do so well in a formal environment. And in, a, in, a, in an informal environment, you need to learn uh, words that are colloquial in nature, that are more urban in nature, that, would, that, would, that you would talk to friends in, a, in an informal manner. So you need to learn both kinds of words, all of these kinds of words that will help you. So yeah, um, for, for you to overcome fluency, uh, you know, um, uh, or for you to get fluency and overcome stuttering, I would say, um, start speaking, just keep on speaking, you know? So that's why I would say, encourage you to seek programs that would help you to increase, you know, uh, your communication abilities. Uh, you may not, uh, today you might be doing so well at 10%. T 20 weeks from now, you may be doing at 20% only, but that's fine. Keep on going and keep on going and you will, you'll do so well in the future. Yes, Vinkat. Last three questions, last three questions. Mm -hmm. Uh, sir, your way of speaking is much attractive. Can you tell me in which point you learned this, sir? So you got a compliment, Vinket. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Thank you very much. That's so sweet. Uh, but uh, for me, I don't know. So, yo, you, you see, I, I watch a lot. Of, I don't know. I don't know. I guess you guys are so younger to me. I'm 28 years old. And so um, I finished my schooling in the year 2008. That's 12 years ago, more than a decade. But when I was when I was in my school, I I watched a lot of uh, Disney shows called uh, Hannah Montana, and, uh, That's So Raven, The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, and then when I came to college, I watched uh, Friends and and uh, whatnot, like How I Met Your Mother and things like that. So there were many American shows, and then there were many British shows. So I was I was really intrigued by the way they spoke because you see native English speakers have a different way of communication than we Indians do because Indians always have the blend of the Indian dialect like the it's called the Indian dialect we have our mother tongue that is that could come in and that could really you know uh, blend it with our, with our accent that could make it not so much posh but I listen to a lot of shows and I guess I pretty much adapted to it subconsciously or rather involuntarily than me making a deliberate effort to do that. So I hope that answers your question. Yes, Venkat. So uh, next question is, uh, uh, yes, here's a question. I like writing quotes, sir, quotations, quotes, but mm -hmm. I feel I'm still far away from the other writers. I face difficulties in framing new and different words. How can I improve it from something oh, wow. else? Yeah, that's a good question. So I wrote my first novel when I was, in my 10th grade, right? In my 10th standard. So I don't know if you guys have watched this movie called Van Helsing. So it's, it's, a, it's a good movie, right? And so it's about vampires. And so I watched that movie, I was like so inspired. I said, I want to write. And I, it was for a hundred pages in Microsoft Word. And I said, wow, I have accomplished something. But now when I look at it, it was the most amateurish, the most disgusting form of book you can ever see on planet Earth because it was so bad that I, I, just, I just can't even look at it these days. But that was a start. So you have to start somewhere. Now I have published a book and I, it's, it's really good, people say. So I'm not speaking in a braggadocious kind of way, but people say. But you have to start somewhere. If you're starting to write quotes, continue doing that. Start fostering that more and more. Do not stop. You need to have consistency for success. If you're not going to be consistent in what you do, you just won't get there. So if you're if you're if you're dissatisfied, you know, or if you're sad that you know your quotes are not up to the mark right now, and if you want to get to a particular position in writing, strive for it, and then eventually you will thrive. Yes, thank you. This is the last question, uh, sir. Can you tell me about an incident? where you have listened attentively in order to act quickly for a problem. Oh yeah, like, like I said, the, the, in the incident with Hewlett Packard, so I didn't know anything. I didn't know a single thing out of that. So, but then my managers and my supervisors who are very tech savvy people, right? They knew everything about it. Now, I was so, so, um, I was mad, number one. I was mad at that person. I was mad at the customer. I said, how can he sue me for millions of dollars? 
I don't have millions of dollars to repay him or anything. Number two, I was so scared because that was my third day on the job, right? Third day on the floor. And HP's management was quite hesitant. I'm being very, very honest here. HP management was quite hesitant to put me on the job because they found out that I'm not that much good in, in computer science. Though I was good in com communication, I was not good in the subject matter where it actually mattered. But eventually, I, I, I crossed all the examination. I, I did so well. But then I came up and I, I sat through. And uh, I had to listen to the managers and supervisors. They just gave me like two to three pointers, right? I had to so attentively listen to it. And then I had to calculate that in my, in my brain. And then I had to articulate that to the customer in a manner that would first pacify him and also would assure him. So it was, it was a tough job. It was a tough situation. But um, I think you will gain confidence uh, as you are continuing to do that. Uh, but uh, that's a good question because you need to listen very attentively. You know, um, you know, we have two ears and one mouth, so it's better to listen more and talk less. Very good, very good point. And uh, I've got one more last question from Vigneshwar. Sir, uh, will you write your second book using this COVID pandemic lockdown? Oh, wow. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't think so because COVID-19, I don't know, people are getting really, really, they're just blowing it out of proportion if you, if you want to be, you know, if you want me to tell the truth, because it's, it's, I, I still feel it's, it's, uh, uh, it was uh, designed by China to, to curb the, the economy of the United States and, and of course, India too. But uh, I'm, I don't think I would honor COVID-19 by writing a book uh, about it. But I, my next book I'm planning on to write about space travel. If at all that gets published, that'd be nice. Yeah. <laughs> We can expect an article like Interstellar once again. So <laughs> thank you so much for all the questions and your patience. You answered so many questions uh, one by one. A few questions were really nice. And all the answers given by you was very, very nice, actually. Thank you so much for coming. And uh, we would love, love to have you whenever you come to India. We would love to have you in our campus. And uh, okay, nice. would love to meet you. And I personally would love to meet you. And uh, we'll have one more session directly. And we'll take it up things. And thank you so much, uh, Venkat. Thank, thank you so much, much for coming. It was really wonderful, and uh, it was uh, it was very very nice. It been nice. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you, so much. thank you so much for having me. It was very nice to meet all of you guys. Though I don't see a lot of faces, I just see your profile pictures. I see Ranjit's face, and that's I think that's sufficient. But yeah, thank you so much for having me. I hope that I answered your questions, and hope it was of some uh, good use to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Venkat. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for participating. Okay.